Will your avoidant ex come back? Well, the answer to that depends on three different factors, and you're in control of only one of those factors. What are those three factors? Well, stay tuned and you'll find out. Hi, this is Lucia with The Art of Love. I'm a dating and relationship expert specializing in helping you get your ex back or to get over your ex. And welcome back, my beautiful no contact army. Have you downloaded Silencio to help you stay in no contact? If not, the link is underneath every single video and podcast. And yes, if you too would like to join our army, all you have to do is hit the subscribe button and the bell notification and you're in. And to read our manual, go to nocontactsecrets.com where you can read two free chapters before you purchase the book. And of course, the link to that is underneath every video and podcast. So how easy or how difficult it will be for your ex to come back is going to depend on which type of avoidant they are. So let's discuss a few differences between dismissive avoidance and fearful avoidance. People with this, with a dismissive avoidant attachment style engage in a lot of withdrawal, distancing, and dismissive behavior. While people with an anxious avoidant or preoccupied avoidant attachment style have a hyper focus on the relationship, they need frequent reassuring and exhibit clingy or controlling behavior. This is pretty much the opposite of someone with a dismissive avoidant attachment style, which I am. I don't hyper focus on a relationship. I don't frequently seek reassurance from my partner. I just look at their behavior and I draw my own conclusions and make a decision to withdraw if I don't like what I see. Uh, I'm definitely not clinging or controlling. If anything, um, the opposite, because I don't want the person to be clinging and controlling with me. So. The fearful avoidant actually has more in common with someone who has an anxious attachment style, which many of you listening to this have, than they do with a dismissive avoidant. They just both happen to have the word avoidant in their attachment style name. Dismissives don't show too many elements of anxiousness. They're very consistent in their response to relationship stress, choosing to withdraw and repress most of the time. Whereas a fearful avoidant sometimes acts according to the avoidant pattern and sometimes acts according to the anxious preoccupied pattern depending on the situation. So if you're anxious, you actually have more in common with the fearful avoidant than you do with a dismissive avoidant. And then finally, dismissives usually set up their relationships in a way that minimizes intimacy and maximizes freedom and autonomy. They want to make sure they can get away from situations that trigger them at a moment's notice. That's why things like moving in or getting married are such a trigger because yes, obviously they can leave, but it's going to be a lot more complicated than if they were single and had their own place. They can't just walk away. So a couple that was actually compromised of a dismissive avoidant and a fearful avoidant was Johnny Depp and Amber Heard. Johnny Depp shows signs of being dismissive. He withdraws under stress and escapes by drinking alcohol and using substances. And meanwhile, Amber, who was diagnosed with borderline personality disorder, showed signs of both high attachment anxiety and high attachment avoidance matching the fearful avoidant pattern. She was extremely jealous, controlling, and clingy. And these dramatic shifts in mood and responsiveness exacerbated Johnny's tendency to escape and withdraw. And we all saw what happened with that relationship. (laughs) So the first factor to consider is whether your ex is a dismissive avoidant or a fearful avoidant. The fearful avoidant is more likely to reach out during no contact and they are more likely to want to get back together. Dismissives since it's in the name, tend to be more dismissive, meaning you're dismissed, I'm done with you. (laughs) It doesn't mean that a dismissive will never come back, but it will be more difficult and will also depend on the other two factors. The second factor in whether or not you will get your avoidant ex back is their interest level. Whether they are, are fearful or dismissive, interest level trumps everything. As I said, dismissive avoidance are the hardest to get back because once they walk away, they usually keep walking unless, unless you are totally their type or they have a high interest level in you for some other reason. So even though their interest level may go below 50, if you heard me talk about interest level and 
You can find out more about that in Doc Love's book, The System. Uh, he's the one who introduced me to interest level and the link for that is underneath every single video. And an important part of interest level is connection. The deeper the connection you have, the more likely they are to come back. And here's how to understand connection. And this is the method that the CIA uses to get information out of people. So everyone has three lives. Their public life. The person that everyone sees walking around, going to work, your colleagues see when you're at the gym, in public, right? The next is the private life and your friends, your close friends, your family, your boyfriend, girlfriend, husband, wife, they see your private life. And then the third one and the most important factor to get information, secret information, if you're a spy, or to connect with someone so that they will always come back is the secret life. And the secret life that consists of, well, secrets, things that most people do not know about you, your dirty little secrets. And it can be things you've done that you've never told anyone, your thoughts, your desires, your wishes, your fantasies, things like that. And, um, you know, it's not that easy to get that information out of someone. I mean, there is a way. <laughs> I'm not going to go into it now. However, um, if, if you're a client of mine and you ask me about it, I, I, sure, uh, I will, of course, tell you how to do it. So if you can get into someone's secret life, you create a bond that's very hard to break because most people do not share their secret life with people. And um, I've shared it with two people and they've shared their secret life with me. And, you know, we're going to have a bond for life. Um, you know, we're, we're still in touch, even though I stopped dating them years ago. So if you can get into someone's secret life, you'll create a bond that will probably never be broken. Okay? And then, oh, by the way, if you are finding this information helpful, I would appreciate if you would give this video a like in order to help the YouTube algorithm show it to other people. And then other people can also find out how to get their avoidant eggs back. So if you're still close to 50 in terms of interest level, you have a good chance of getting them back. I've given guys second chances, but only because I was initially very interested in them. But most of the guys I walked away from, I never looked back, especially if they betrayed me and I felt I could never trust them. Avoidance have a hard time trusting people in the first place. So betraying their trust is one of the worst things you can do. And then finally, the third factor, and this is the one that you have control over, is how you behave after the breakup. The worst thing you can do is chase and avoid who has dumped you. Unless, of course, you cheated or took them for granted. And in either case, you still have to do no contact for a period of time. But if you cheated or took it for granted, I did a video on that topic and I will put a link in the upper right hand corner on YouTube. However, if that is not you, then you absolutely have to stay in no contact and wait for them to say something significant. And again, if their interest level is high enough, they will. The problem is that if you have an anxious attachment style, and you probably do, or you wouldn't be listening to this, it's going to be very hard for you to stay in no contact. And therefore, your chance of getting your ex back goes down. That's why I did the video titled, If You Don't Get Your Ex Back, It's Your Fault. And I will, of course, again, put the link in the upper right hand corner on YouTube. And a few months ago, I dropped one of my clients. Yes, I did, because they broke no contact and they called their ex and then they called them again and again and again and again. <laughs> so I knew I wasn't going to be able to help them at that moment. And I told them that they needed to work on their attachment style before I would, would consider working with them again. That's how serious I am about no contact. OK, I have no problem dropping clients if they're not going to listen. They're wasting my time and their money. So luckily they listened. I hooked them up with a great therapist who deals with people who have an anxious attachment style and now they're back as my client and they're doing much better. And no, in the meantime, they did not get their ex back. So as you can see, acting on your anxiety and reaching out to your ex when you get triggered is not going to bring them back. That's why I've done so many videos on no contact and responding to your ex and why I have my Silencio app with the counter to count the days 
that you've been in no contact and the panic button. And anyone who tells you to reach out to your ex when they've dumped you, whether they tell you to reach out after 21 days, 30 days, 45 days, or 60 days and beyond, does not know what they are talking about. As I mentioned earlier, unless you cheated or took your ex for granted, you should not be reaching out. Reaching out to an avoidant who dumped you is only going to push them further away and prolong the no contact period. And I hate that people are giving the wrong information and setting you up for failure. I know you think it's impossible to get your ex back, especially if they're an avoidant. However, if you do your part and leave them alone and let time and nostalgia do its part, the chances of you getting your ex back go up exponentially. So now I want to hear from you. Is your ex a dismissive avoidant or a fearful avoidant? And how do you know? Please comment below. And in the meantime, if you would like my help to get your ex back, contact me at theartoflove.net and we will send you the rates. The direct link is underneath every single video and podcast. If you found this video helpful, please like, subscribe, and share. If you're listening to this as a podcast, please rate and review. And finally, remember that love inspires, empowers, uplifts, and enlightens.